Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In this video, we will look at how you can use the 3D shape to do a light wrap around a keyed talent. As always, there are other traditional techniques such as creating edge mats and more. However, you might find this method with the 3D shape useful to do quick light wrapping. And I'll finish off this video using the IBL object to apply the matching tonal palette of the background. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Or if you're watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your internet browser. Starting in action, I have already keyed the talent using the modular keyer. I used the master keyer tools with a bit of pixel spread to fix the edges. To apply the light wrap, first I will create the 3D shapes and track them to the talent. Ensure nothing is selected in the action schematic by holding CONTROL and clicking in the grey area. Go to the action node bin, select the talent in the media list and double click on the 3D shape node. Now draw an open spline on this side of the talent. You do not need to be 100% accurate with your spline because the 3D shape projection will respect the original mat from the key. You will see this very shortly. Keep the spline open by clicking on the FINISH button. Now press the A hotkey to switch to the ADD POINTS tool. Hold SHIFT and drag out an edge gradient to create the 3D shape thickness. You might want to add a few more points to vary the thickness along the spline. Let's feather the 3D shape before tracking it. Double click on the 3D shape node and go to the BASICS menu. Switch the GMOSK transparency to for 3D shape only. You can now see where the fall off is going to be for the light wrap. As a quick tip, you can switch to the spline's gradient menu and adjust the curve to increase or decrease the intensity of the fall off. Now let's track this shape. Select the GMOSK node in the action schematic. Now hold CONTROL and draw a box selection around all the control points of the spline. Switch to the GMOSK tracking menu. When it comes to vertex tracking, the trackers will track from the background. So we need to feed the green screen into the background temporarily to do the track. Go back to the batch schematic and connect the green screen into the action background input. Now go back into action to perform the track. With each vertex selected, you can click on the tracker button. So each vertex point is now a set of tracker boxes. Some of the trackers won't work because either there is not a defined pattern at this point or the tracker is at the bottom of the screen. You can get around these problems by switching the TOOLS menu to OFFSET REFERENCE. Select any of the problem trackers and change the reference to a more suitable tracking reference. Now let's analyse the movement of the talent. So jumping back out to action and scrubbing the time bar, you can see that we have locked the spline to the moving talent. Go back to batch and reconnect the proper background back into the action node. Now let's create the second 3D shape. But this time, I want to shape track it to the talent. Ensure you are on frame 1. At this point, it is important to make sure that nothing is selected in the action schematic. Otherwise, the new 3D shape will attach itself to whatever is selected. In the action bin menu, select the talent in the media list and double click on the 3D shape. Now start drawing the spline from the top of his head going all the way down to this elbow in the shot. Click FINISH to keep the spline open. As before, press A to switch to ADD POINTS mode. Hold SHIFT and drag out a few gradients to define the shape thickness. For the edge softness, switch back to the 3D shape menus and set the GMOSK transparency to for 3D shape only. In order to shape track the shape to the talent, select the GMOSK node in the action schematic. In the GMOSK menu, switch to the tracking menu. By default, the shape tracking is set to track the talent in media entry 1 in the media list. Click the shape track button to start the shape track.
You can now scrub the time bar to ensure both splines are locked onto the talent. As a big point, even though the spline is tracked to the talent, you can still offset the vertex points if you need to tweak the shape of the spline. Now let's go ahead and project onto the splines and create the light wrap. Select each of the 3D shape nodes and turn on its media projection. So the talent's media is projected onto the 3D shape and you will note that the talent's main alpha is respected by the 3D shape and its projection. So let's perform some relighting. Go to the Action Bin menu and drag a light into the Action Schematic. This light is affecting all the objects in the 3D composite. Push the light back in Z space behind the camera to light everything evenly in the composite. Next, go back to the Action Bin menu and drag out a second light into the Action Schematic. By default, it affects all the objects in the composite. But I just wanted to affect the two 3D shapes. Click the Tools pull down menu and choose the Light link. This is mapped to the L hotkey. Drag connections to each of the 3D shapes from the Light node. Now switch back to Select mode by pressing M. You can move the light around in the composite and you can see how it influences the edges of the talent. So as an example, I'll call up the contextual menu on the Light node and reset it. I'll push the intensity up to 300%. I'll also click the Colour Pot and sample the colour from one of the steel beams in the background. If you toggle the H hotkey, you can see how we've created the light wrap with the lights and the 3D shape. So you can use the lights to influence the light wrap or you can use an IBL object. Let's set this up. Delete both lights out of the Action Composite. In order to use the background as a source for the IBL object, it needs to be a media entry in Action. Switch to the Batch Schematic view. Select the Action node and press Ctrl N to add a new media input. Connect the background clip into the red front input. Double click on the Action node and switch back to the views. We don't want the background as an image object, so please delete it. Switch to the Action Bin menu. Ensure that the media is selected in the media list. In the Action Node Bin, drag out the IBL or image based lighting object into the Action Schematic. In the past, the image based lighting object required a proper IBL map to function correctly. In Flame Premium 2015, you can now use any image as an IBL object and it will work the same. Drag a connection from each of the 3D shapes to the IBL object. This will assign the tonal colours of the IBL object to the 3D shape projections. Now double click on the IBL object for its controls. Under the Mapping header, the mode should be set to Ambient. The idea is that the colours of the background can be applied to the light wrap to match it into the shot. Switch the Mapping type to Cylindrical. Ensure Regen is enabled for interactivity. If you increase the intensity of the IBL, the colour palette of the background will affect the edges a lot more. You can also control what colours within the IBL will have greater effect on the light wrap. Enable Users Back. You can now see how the IBL object is being used to influence the lighting. By rotating the IBL object, you can redefine what tonal range from the background will influence the light wrap. Turn off Users Back to see the main composite. By toggling the IBL object on and off with the H hotkey, you can see what a difference the IBL makes to the light wrap. And finally, because everything is tracked using 3D shapes, when you scrub the time bar, the light wrap stays locked to the keyed talent. Comments, feedback, and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.